Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, your host, uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Today, we're going to talk about the spiritual warriors' challenges, the spiritual seekers' challenges uh, that are put upon our path to awakening and self-realization. And uh, I'm going to get into that and talk about it in details. And uh, I have a feeling a lot of you can identify with these different challenges that we all face uh, or have faced in different uh, times in our lives. Uh, there is a lot of ups and downs and and tricks that is presented on this path a lot of times uh, the rug is being pulled from under our feet um, a lot of times we feel like we're wasting our time or we have been on the spiritual path and there's been advancements and then we feel like we have strayed away and uh, get lost and after a number of years we find the path again so there's a lot of different things that happens to different people uh, and we're going to get into that and talk about it and hopefully bringing some clarity uh, and then I, those of you who are the first time with me I like to welcome you what we're going to do is typically we begin with a meditation around 15 minutes to 20 minutes or a little bit longer and uh, the meditation basically is to quiet the mind and then uh, we can be present and and listen and hear um, and then after that, I do a talk, and after the talk, if you have any questions, you're welcome to either raise your, your hand or unmute yourself or write on the chat box. Um, Mr. Amir, is the chat box open? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Wonderful. So, I was just waiting for a couple of moments for everybody to uh, jump in, and then we get it going um, it's 10.03 so cool all right so uh, with respect to um, the US election of the presidency and there is a lot of uh, energy flying all over. A lot of people are uh, either nervous or concerned. Or uh, This morning I went to my favorite coffee shop to get my coffee and uh, I asked one of the staff uh, how she's doing and she said she's kind of anxious. Um, I asked her, why are you anxious? She said, because we're waiting for the results. So since there's a lot of energy out there and it's kind of static uh, why don't we today do an active meditation and it's a grounding meditation we're going to be doing to get us grounded and centered so I'm going to ask you all to uh, we're going to be standing up and uh, uh, perform this meditation so go ahead and create your space so in this particular meditation I'm just gonna wait for everybody to get situated what we want to do is we want to get grounded and you may want to imagine that from your root chakra from this area down imagine you don't have any legs everything is roots you're like a thick old thousand year old tree and you're really rooted to the planet one quick moment 
and make a little adjustment here okay and you're really rooted so for one moment I would like you to imagine close your eyes and imagine that your roots like an old tree go deep in the planet and then if there are any winds or any kind of uh, storm or anything your upper body moves but your second part of your body your lower part doesn't it's really rooted and to feel you can also if you feel like it you can take your shoes off and feel the floor and connect with it if that's easier for you uh, as well as you can go up and down a little bit in this in this position to kind of get rooted to kind of feel that you're connected now the next move is it's a breathing process that we're going to be breathing and bringing the prana the power of the earth into your body so you have all these roots going into the earth and as you breathe in you can move your hands like this and it's just to give you the feeling like the prana the energy of the planet which is associated with the color green it's a green color and if you see all the vegetations they're green and you're bringing the energy of the planet you're sucking it into yourself so let's let's do this a couple of times and then we go to the next phase so take a deep breath and then breathe out again breathe in and breathe out again breathe in and then breathe out breathe in and then breathe out Breathe in and breathe out. So let's keep doing this one more time. Breathing in and breathe it out. Great, beautiful. Now, as you're breathing, so you're all these roots that you have that goes deep in. And earth is sucking in the power the prana of the earth into your body through the roots and it comes all the way here now I would like you to see as you pulling the power of the planet into your body into your torso I want you to see it that from here on it's spiraling spiraling up so this energy is moving and as it's moving it connects the root chakra to the second chakra then it comes to the third goes to the fifth a uh, fourth your heart the fifth the sixth which is the third eye and then it releases from your crown chakra and it goes up in the space so what you are in between here is a conduit you're connecting like a connector connecting the earth to heaven and the energy is traveling through you you bring it in and then it's spiraling through you connecting all the chakras together and then it goes up so we're going to do it again you're using your imagination 
and you're bringing this energy within yourself and you start to feel it. So let's start again. Very good. You have your eyes closed and you're pulling in the energy within yourself and then you're letting it go and it's spiraling up, turning around, coming back again, bringing it in and then so take a deep breath in and then release. One more time. Very good. All right. Now the next step is that you become a generator. You're generating electricity. You're generating energy. So we're doing, we're generating, we're pulling the energy of the planet, which there's plenty of it for all of us because it's been supporting us ever since the ever since. So now you're becoming a generator you're gently going up and down you're squatting and as you're doing this you're going to create this noise so this noise is the sound of the generator that is sucking in the prana from the earth into the body and then pushing it up through the chakras to the crown and releasing it so you're going up and down and you're making this noise. Make sure you make the noise and make sure you go up and down. It's important unless you have problems with your knees. If you have problems with your knees, or you have some physical issue, you can't do it, it's okay. But if not, go ahead, do it because it gets you into it, especially when you're making the noise and you're going up and down. And then there may be a few moments that you're uncomfortable, but you will break through it. So let's go ahead and do that together. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Keep going, keep going. Don't stop. And you have your attention on one point. So go up and down and make create the sound. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and even if you feel a little dizzy, just keep going for it. <laughs> Just go for it. Push through. Keep going up and down. Keep doing it. Pull the energy in. Just build up the energy. Take a deep breath. Bring the energy all the way up here and then exhale.
Take a deep breath. Put your hands here on your heart. I'd like you to keep your attention on one point, whether it's on your third eye or it's on your heart. Your attention is on one place. And just be in this place of quietness, silence, and know that all is well, despite the noise outside of you, all is very well. And in this moment, I would like you to put your story away, whatever is your story of yourself. Whether you've been nice, you've been good, or you haven't. Whether you're happy with yourself or not. Whether you feel like you have betrayed your family or yourself or friends or you have cheated, or you haven't done enough, whatever is your story, which most of the time it's negative, I want you to put your story away in this very moment. And be storyless. And simply love yourself and accept yourself for the courage of, of being here, having the courage that you have showed up today. You stop doing whatever else and you have come to this sacred union, all of us together. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Take a deep breath and just Hang out here. Hang out in this place.
just hanging out here in silence with your best friend Just know at this moment, all is well. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Nothing is out of alignment. Even though it seems like it, but it's all in alignment. Everything's exactly where it needs to be. As weird as it may seem, as screwed up as it may look like, Everything is exactly where it needs to be. And as you're just sitting here quietly in meditation, the energy that you have created through the active meditation, it's still flowing through you, spiraling from the roots, your roots, from the earth, and it's all spiraling up through your spine, through your crown chakra. And up to the space.
Beautiful. Careful. Slowly, slowly, you come back. How often do you spend time with a group of people that you can sit with in silence, having maybe your eyes open and not saying anything? Many people will get very uncomfortable. That's right, Leslie, zero. Spending time with a group of friends and being quiet. Okay, regarding the topic of the day. Honestly, I don't even feel like talking right now. So, <laughs> I feel like it's disturbing what is going on right now. So let's just hang out together a little bit in silence. Let silence do the talking.
long time ago, I read a book, um, <clears throat> which at the time I read it, back in the day, uh, I was so thirsty and hungry for spiritual wisdom and uh, this beautiful uh, man, friend, teacher, brother of mine gave me this book. Uh, it was called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. And at the end of the book, there's a statement, there's a quote saying, we go to the spirit when our foundation is shaken, only to find out that it's the spirit who shakes it. We go to spirit when our foundation is shaken, only to find out that it is the spirit who shakes it. So, on this path of self-awakening, majority of spiritual seekers, pretty much 99.99% .99 of us spiritual seekers, the lover of the truth, we had to go through some kind of trauma. As my old friend used to say, shock treatment. A lot of us had to have some kind of near-death experience to be awakened to the world of the spirit or we lost somebody close to us that forced us to dig deeper within. Some of us had to go through a major divorce and bankruptcy. Some maybe had to lose a child or someone very close to them that they loved, a lover, a child, husband, wife, parent, siblings that forced us to come to the spiritual path. We, most of us had to have some kind of major shake that the ground underneath our feet got really shaken. Our foundation got shaken. And it forces you, you know, as you're shaken and you're being slapped in your face or pour the bucket of water on you, that too kind of wake you up, you know, from the coma you're in, you wake up and you begin to question your existence. You begin to question the nature of existence, of life. Who am I? What am I doing on this planet? What is the meaning of life? Which I'm sure everybody has asked that question. And in this process as this is happening, and it's very painful for a lot of us, then the spirit shows itself to us. Some of you had very tough childhood. Uh, you have dealt with being abandoned. Your parents left you. They shipped you from one place to another place. Maybe you grew up in a foster home. Maybe you grew up with one parent in a dysfunctional situation or both parents one was alcoholic, the other one was not available, or whatever is. There is multiple different way, different stories 
that I've heard throughout the years that I've been on this path and I've done the work. Um, abusive parents that sexually have abused us or physically we've been beaten up or all kinds of different things have happened. And all of these traumatic experiences in childhood or throughout the life has awakened something within us and forced us to look within, to look inside. Does this sound familiar with any of you? Do you resonate with it? Some of you have been in a a revolution, a country that had to go through a revolution or your town, your village got attacked by enemy soldiers and there's been massacres, there's been war. Uh, we all have had different experiences. Some are more extreme and less in comparison to the others, maybe not as extreme. Uh, shock treatment, but overall I would say majority of spiritual seekers they have gone through some kind of extremity and whatever has been the situation. Maybe you were forced to marry somebody you didn't want to, maybe they dragged you out of school and made you marry someone or they forbid you to uh, study what you wanted and go the path you wanted to go down. Um, a lot of us got into abusive patterns. Uh, we became alcoholic or drug addict or food addict or sugar addict or danger addict or sex addict or whatever. Uh, we all have had our our fair share of different traumatic experiences and shock treatment. But I'm here to share with you that that is a part of the awakening process. It's this kind of things happen to us by design and when you arrive to a higher level of consciousness, as your consciousness is expanding and your mind is opening up and you start to get the reins on your mind and you start to master your mind, you begin to see and change your position from being a victim to victor. And gradually you begin to see that this was everything that happened to you happened out of love. And when you go further deeper in your own consciousness you begin to see that the Spirit, God, the Spirit, God, Her Majesty, Beloved, the Creator, Yahweh, Krishna, Christ, any name you would like to give it, you choose the name was behind the whole story. So all the trauma you went through, all the misery you experienced, all the hardship you went through was God's will. It was the Spirit willed it. So we can, as we become more awake, we cannot blame human beings or circumstances for what has happened to us. 
because we get to see your third eye is opening up and you begin to see that it was God who wanted this to happen to you. And it all happened to you because of love and compassion to help you to wake up. To wake up to something much more meaningful and deeper than what appears to be, what it looks to be. And waking you up from this deep sleep, deep coma, that majority of the people on this planet are in that state, even today, even in this dawn of the era of awakening, and we're in the very dawn of it, the age of Aquarian, a lot of people are still asleep and sleepwalking. So, a lot of times, as I mentioned, everything starts with some kind of shock, some shock treatment of whatever is the story. Maybe you're very much invested into real estate or stock market or whatever, and your investments go sour, or your partner cheats you, and then you fall off the grace. Um, whatever is the story. Or maybe you're a spiritual teacher and you fall off the grace. Uh, you're an actor, you're a singer, you're a politician, and you fall off the grace. Because there's something you need to learn about life, about yourself. So this happens all the time and is a part of the path. Now what happens is after you are being pulled after your shock treatment, again, I'm not saying that every single person on the planet who comes to the awakening goes through. I didn't say it's 100% the case because some of you may come and tell me, well, that wasn't my story. So I'm generalizing things. Uh, there are some awakened beings that they didn't have to go through that, but that's very, very rare. So what happens is you begin to ask questions. Your questions are you're seeking the meaning of life because you're suffering within and Quite often it happens with reading a spiritual book. Uh, somebody gives you a spiritual book or invites you to meditation or one thing leads to another and you begin to question things and dig deeper and start looking at the meaning of life. And as you go forward, what happens is there is a honeymoon period that the self, the presence, the power, God, the beloved begin to show herself to you. Begin, you begin to have some spiritual experiences. And your third eye is opening up to, it's getting, it's opening up the pineal gland begins to produce some DMT and you get, you're get into the groove and you're getting the juice. And your spiritual experiences could be very profound. You may have an encounter with an angelic realms of different angels show up or maybe you have some trans-dimensional beings appearing to you. Uh, the Buddha shows up to you. Christ shows up to you. Krishna 
or Saint Germain or whatever is you're getting downloads or you're being seeing entities or they're touching you or they're talking to you or you have these profound experiences of oneness. So you will go through your honeymoon phase with God. But then the honeymoon ends. <laughs> like all honeymoons. <laughs> like like all honeymoons end. <laughs> Your honeymoon with God ends too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing because <laughs> and it's a very, very, very painful period because <laughs> the honeymoon ends and now you're bewildered, you're lost and you're doing whatever it takes because you want this spiritual experiences you want to get back in the groove and get back into the juice and receive the love of God so it, that was a carrot it was a carrot put in front of you because they're pulling you in they're just re reeling, reeling you in so because you haven't done the work in that way. You have done the work in so many different ways. You know, there's everything is and is not. Everything is this way and that way simultaneously. You have done the work previously in past lives and you have come to this point. So there is a level of maturity and readiness, but this phase which could be your last phase is a different story and so now you're getting pulled in and what happens is quite often you're not getting these spiritual experiences anymore there's moments that you just go into meditation and you go into divine oneness is not happening so and it's a confusing period you can't go back now you can't go back to ignorance you can't go back to being asleep again because the spirit has shaken you and awakened you and some of us will try will try to go back We'll go back to the booze or drugs or whatever habits we have and kind of numb ourselves so maybe I can just fall asleep again but that doesn't happen. No matter how hard you're trying to numb yourself with all kinds of different substances or destructive relationships, uh, sexuality, danger, uh, food you you can't go back and it seems like you can't go forward either so you fall in this abyss of confusion and you start going around and round and round you're going around yourself in this period it may happen a few times in your life is makes you forces you to dig deeper and bring you out of this comfort zone and you go out there starts looking for spiritual teachers uh, going to different seminars workshops reading different books listening to different uh, people on YouTube hoping to find a way to make you feel good again, to create those 
uh, blissful states that you were in and to get back into that. And maybe sometimes you get a glimpse of it. Another carrot is dangling in front of you. But uh, in a lot of cases, you can't recreate that. So now the spirit wants to and is forcing you to dig deeper inside. So a part of that you may just enter into a cult or follow what people call a fake guru or a controlling narcissist kind of a guru who is very strict and uh, is going to torture you in some way or the other. And so a lot of people fall into that and uh, they put a number of years into a relationship with a spiritual teacher which is sort of abusive and you got to get you get out of that too eventually and you wake up out of it when you finish your karma whatever that is that you have to finish I'm not saying that happens for everybody. I'm saying it's generally the pattern for most spiritual te uh, seekers. Uh, so this pull push with the divine self is going to continue is pulling you in, giving you some spiritual experiences and then kind of leaving you. It appears to be that way that you're cooking inside yourself you're cooking within and it's very confusing period and a lot of times you may feel like okay i don't want to live anymore i want to kill myself you know i've gone through that and uh there's a lot of suffering in this period that happens to a lot of spiritual seekers and then they do a lot of guru guru hopping uh searching trying this trying that it's very confusing especially nowadays because of the internet and so much information is available and uh, also this industry as this path has turned into business too it was always some sort of it but now it's more of a business as in comparison to 50, 40, 50 years ago. So, because there's a lot of demand for it and there's a lot of money in it. So, uh, but then you may come to another period that you give up the spirituality and you go to the world. And I went to that period too. And you say, you know what, hell with this. Um, I don't give a damn about God or self-realization and I want to go out there and make money or I want to go and have a family. Uh, I want to have a child. I want to settle down or whatever. Whatever is that your priority at the moment and you, your desires. So in my case was I want to go out in the world and make money and retire early so I can just go and play around. So I turn my back to the path. But now I know that I never really turned my back to the path. It appeared to be that way. And that may, you just may go on for two years, five years, ten years. And then there's one way, one day you look back and you say, oh my God, I lost my path. What happened to me? I used to be very spiritual. I used to practice. I used to meditate. I used to do yoga. Blah, blah, blah. And now I haven't done anything. And then you slowly get back into it. Something happens, pulls you back in. So if you're in that place or you've experienced it, 
or you go through it, know that that's normal too. That is a part of the whole process. Even though you feel like you, stri you stray away and you got lost, that was meant to be. It's a part of you being cooked. It's a part of your being in this pot of stew and the master is cooking you, is preparing you. The master chef is getting you ready. It's possible on this path that you have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with an external teacher, with a guru. And whether the guru is real or fake or whatever, it doesn't matter. And you have a really heart-to-heart -heart connection and you get really dedicated on that path with your guru. <clears throat> and everything is groovy for you. And then it may something happen that that connection breaks. Or you get sick of the guru or the teacher or teachings. Or a lot of times the guru does something you don't like because a lot of us are projecting that the guru should be a saint and they can't do anything wrong. And it, depending on the, the group, what the group, what values they hold highest. So if their values is that their spiritual teacher is vegetarian, is not having sex, she's not having sex, she's celibate, um, whatever is the, the totality of of the group and they hold these values at the highest point they're projecting it on their teacher and some teachers they they play that game and uh, so anyway let's say something happens and your teacher is not doing the kind of thing you find out that he or she's having an affair with one of the followers uh, or is eating meat or whatever he's doing or she's doing and now you are angry and you leave your guru, you leave your teacher. And you go in a search for another teacher or you just go on your own, you're bitter, you're upset and you keep seeking, the story goes on, or you feel betrayed. There's all kinds of different scenarios that happen on this path. I'm just throwing some of them that I remember and it comes into my mind. So you're welcome to share with me your story if you want. But there is a million different variety of scenarios of different stuff happen. Or maybe you do something stupid and the guru kicks you out of the ashram or the commune or the cult. That happens too. So... Ultimately, there is a lot of ups and downs on this path. And it's very natural, a very normal, maybe I should say normal, that a lot of times you're going to feel stuck. And that's very frustrating. A lot of times you're going to feel very stuck in your path. A lot of times you become very prejudiced and you think you're very spiritual and you're very highly evolved but you have developed spiritual conditioning like my guru is better than your guru my way spiritual path is more evolved than yours uh, we as a group are highly evolved in comparison to other people. And you have to be careful there too because that is another trap. Because the moment you think your way is better than other people or your teacher is better or your level of consciousness is higher than others, because of your practice or your belief, 
know that you're stuck because that automatically creates separation. We're the Buddhist, we're wearing red, uh, or we're Osho Sannyasins, or we're following this guru and we're followers of, I don't know, all these different teachers out there, and we're the better ones, and everybody else in this planet is unconscious. Because our way is the only way. Well, that's how Christian church or Islamic faith or Jewish faith, they're all doing the same thing. And they caused many different wars and they've killed millions of people because of that. So you are stuck there too. And that's okay. That's a part of the deal. Eventually, you recycle. Eventually, if you're lucky, because now you're stuck into this spiritual conditioning, which is very dangerous. I would say it's more dangerous than sleepy people. Uh, because sleepy people, they're asleep. And spiritual people, they've learned the lingo and the way and they can hide the dark side and their evil side underneath a beautiful white clothes and with the white rope and and bearing the mala and saying all the nice things and having their crystals and feathers and everything and caring for the land and caring for the world and all that blah 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 but underneath there's a lot of hate anger prejudice a lot of emotional issues a lot of stuff a lot of greed that has not been dealt with so but it's covered up with this beautiful holy mask so you may have gone through that, you may be in it now, or you may get into it. But know that that's also a part of the path. That is a part of your spiritual journey and you have to go into that and recycle into that too. These are all like recycling centers that you get into it and you it seems like you're stuck into it you damage yourself you damage other people but that's a part of the path you have to go if that happens to you you have to go through it till your time is up and when your time is up this the grace the yani the grace the guru the master the beloved will come and fetch you out. They'll pull you out of it. <clears throat> These are some of the things that comes to my mind at the moment. There may be other stuff that as we're talking with each other, other stuff pop for me and I share them with you. But I felt like sharing this with you to put some light on this um, this is in some ways it's very simple to come to self-realization in some ways it's the w most difficult thing on this planet uh, it is a paradox and some of us I feel very lucky that I came across my sat guru I came across Papaji and I had a very strong resonance with his teachings and that didn't mean I got it 
it took another 25 something years before 30 years before it clicked but I feel at young age I was put on the right path very quickly uh, but it's still there was a lot of ups and downs and a lot of twist to it another thing you may want to be aware and be careful that will happen happens to a lot of spiritual seekers is that you come across cities city is a Sanskrit word for power you may come across spiritual power and that happened to me and uh, and that is also very normal I mean it's not a requirement but it does happen that you develop healing abilities you become a healer or you become a psychic uh, you develop abilities to be clairsentient uh, clairvoyant um, and you get you acquire these spiritual powers of doing different things uh, having visions premonition uh, knowing things um, and sometimes it becomes abusive and uh, and the spiritual seeker gets stuck there and they boost up their ego and they boost up the illusion of the I thought that look at me look at me again I've been there I've done that okay I'm not very proud of it but I have done it that I acquired power and you use it and you abuse it in the beginning like a kid that's been given this brand new toy and can do wonders with it so you mess around with it and if you're lucky and the grace comes after you eventually you realize that you're hurting yourself and you're hurting other people and actually that power becomes a hindrance it's keeping you from liberation so basically you enter these circles of sort of sort of I would call maybe purification cycles and you go through different ones maybe all of them maybe only one of them and eventually you are purified and when I say purified it's this is just a way of communicating okay uh, you're worthy enough you have cleaned up enough for the grace to now start to reveal itself to you and maybe you're lucky and you have the right teacher appear or you are getting very strong inner messages and your inner teacher is working with you whatever other teacher inner teacher it doesn't matter they're all the same and don't get hung up on that one either uh, the main point is that you come to clarity and the fog starts to disappear and you see the trophy you recognize where the trophy is and you get focused on that it means that liberation becomes your focal point and you start to kind of reject all these other stuff and not pay attention to it that my guru is better or my teaching is better or look at me I got so much power and I can heal this and that you kind of ignore these things and you're really focused on one thing which is the path of love the path of self-realization and if you're on the right path then that goal that path is reflecting back it's pushing you to look within yourself and to bring the light 
inwards. And of course, then you're going to encounter another series of uh, challenges. Because now, maybe for the first time on your spiritual path, you are now forced to look at your dark side and look at your shadows. And that's sort of coming towards the end of the road. That to look at your own shit. Which nobody really wants to look at their own shit. Because why would I look at my own shit when I can look at yours and blame you? Why should I look at my dark, dark intentions or dark side? Especially if you were born or you grow up in the West that we like to blame other people or sue other people and we never like to look at ourselves. So, so now you're coming to the toughest part of this journey, looking at yourself and look, looking with this big flashlight every corner of your own darkness. And that part, those parts get exposed. And it's very frightening, very scary. And most people, they want to escape. But you have to go through it. You have to climb your own wall and walk into your own fears and dark sides. And quite often you need someone you need your guru you need your teacher to walk you through that because it's it's a tough frightening process and we need encouragement uh, and existence provides that for you her majesty works it out for you and help is there there's always help there one way or the other you're not alone you can't do this on your own. It's impossible. Yeah. You, the grace has to intervene and pull you in. Even though it looks like you're doing it, but you're not doing it. So. Now, any questions, any comments? Go to the chat box. No. Are we doing with the chat? No. Uh, my brother, Heinz, welcome back. We're very happy to have you back in the mix. Hey, hello. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you... I had a question which I asked you before this is, um, I'm very unhappy to hear that my thoughts are an enemy to me. Right. Uh, like my thoughts make me sleep for some hours or that I say them when I <clears throat> more often I, I um, check out that my thoughts are in automatic process and um, I can ask my thoughts is this really helpful what you are doing <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I would would watch my thoughts um, but not say they are an enemy because I need my thoughts as I need my body and my body goes to sleep and my thoughts I like to go to sleep for some, some hours right. and uh, I would right. ask you if this is something you can agree um, how did you come to that conclusion were you thinking or that your thoughts Was it was it was was it the thought form when you came to that conclusion, or how did you come to that? I think it's more <clears throat> a feeling that a part of me is something like an enemy, and I <laughs> would not live like this. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't like your mind 
in the form of thoughts came to you and told you, what do you mean that thoughts are your enemy? Your thoughts are not your enemy. You need them as you need your body. It didn't came in that form? Yeah, it's yeah, like this. So sometimes I need my thoughts when I make some conversation. I'm very happy that I have these thoughts. <laughs> and, uh, I can deal with them. Right. Uh, and yeah. of course, uh, sometimes uh, they are uh, not very helpful. Right. Right. Okay. So what I'm referring to, I'm very glad you brought you brought this up, and bec and. Uh, you, we did talk earlier before the Academy started it, and I did encourage you to bring it up during the Academy so everybody else can uh, benefit from it. So the working mind, there is no problem with the working mind, and we all need it. So I need my working mind to, if I'm to go on a tour or I'm going to come to Germany, uh, I need to use my working mind to search for buying a flight ticket, figure out the hours, when do I go, when do I come back. Uh, I need my working mind to find myself an Airbnb close to where I'm working, uh, figure out what kind of clothes I'm going to take, what do I need, all these things. We need the working mind, absolutely. What I'm referring to that is the enemy is the monkey mind so it's the part that's dwelling in the past or using the past and projecting it into the future as fear worry and anxiety that's what I'm referring to and it is the enemy as long as one hasn't mastered the mind. The mind is a horrible master, is the worst master on this planet. The worst thing can happen to anybody is when their mind is their master. And what it does, it always tortures you, always. The only thing it will do to you is to torture you. By taking you into whatever you've done in the past that has resulted in failure and blaming you for it continuously. Whatever you've missed, if you missed the train, you missed a love, a woman, an investment or whatever in your life, blaming you for missing it. and put you in fear, worry, and anxiety about the future. But when you master the mind, then it's a wonderful employee. It's a wonderful servant. It will serve you very, very well. So maybe I wasn't very clear at the moment or I'm just using different kind of ter terminology to grab my audience attention in the moment um, that the mind, the monkey mind is the enemy and we need to conquer it. We need to conquer the enemy territory and submit them to our rules because they're constantly attacking our land, they're constantly torching the villages, killing, killing our citizens and destroying our land and want to conquer us. So we have to fight them. And that's one of the reasons I designed the upcoming workshop, the Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop, which we're going to have next week, is basically the main part of it Besides that, we're going to learn how to raise our vibrations to a higher frequency and sustain it in a higher frequency is 
how to do mine management. How can I get the reins of this mine in my mind in my hands and be the master of it instead of jumping on this horse without any kind of training, not knowing how to direct this powerful, beautiful beast. And this beast has taken off and is running in all these different directions. And at any moment I can fall off and break my neck and have a, either die or have a lifetime injury and be paralyzed. So we need to learn to master the mind. Uh, is that, does it more sound, resonate to you or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. You, you, yes. yeah, you. yeah, exactly. That's really what I, I'm glad you brought it up because this is really good for everybody to hear. But this, this is really what I mean. And when we learn how to master the mind means that because there's other teachings that it's out there which it's false teachings I'm bold enough to say that positive thinking think positively people tell you or keep visualizing or don't say anything negative because it's going to happen to you. That's mind fucking. It's very exhausting continuously to be mindful of not saying anything negative. Everything you say has to come positive out of your mouth. It's very annoying because I've been around friends that people I know that they're very much into pseudo spirituality and you're just talking and you say you know what I feel like I'm coming down with a with a cold and they say no 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 don't say that don't say that because you're gonna manifest it and or you're just saying yeah I don't know about the, 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 that the mo I don't know if I can make it you know okay we're gonna be hiking for three hours and get on top of this mountain I go I don't know you know I don't think I'm fit to do it no 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 don't say that don't say that it's going to manifest it's like you get to a point you can't even talk about to these people because every word comes out of your mouth somebody wants to correct you and it's very annoying because now I can't talk anything I want to say someone is going to correct me that it's negative talking, negative thinking. That's why I say no thinking, no thoughts. That's one thing. B is that the recognition of recognizing we're working on ourselves training ourselves this is a training program because imagine like you're 40 years old you're 50 years old you're 60 years old and all your years that you lived and I'm not pointing out to you Heinz okay I'm just saying in general all the years I lived I'm gonna use myself I have no mind management. I have nothing. No one has ever taught me anything. So I'm always mind fucking. I'm always in the past. Always worried about things I've done. And projecting it always to the future. And I go through that all my life. Now you come to this teachings. So I have to treat you like a child because you have to teach you a brand new language. I have to teach this to my people in a short period of time because we live in an era that everybody wants instant gratification. They want instantly to awaken. 
They want to get to the top of the mountain in quickly. They don't have any patience. And if you can't deliver it, then you're not the good teacher. Let me go to the next guy. And let me try this other workshop. But this takes time. Because there has been no training. And now you're dealing with a six-year-old person. They're not 12 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, six years old. They're 60, 70, 50, whatever years old of zero training of how to be the master of the mind. Now you have to create a system to deliver the message. A, you have to make sure that they have this experience of inner silence. So you got to create a situation that they get a glimpse of life without the mind. Life with no mind. So when the person gets that glimpse, oh wow, wait a minute. I am functional. Actually, I'm even doing better in this life without thinking. When I'm more quiet, I'm a lot more efficient. When I'm not dwelling in the past or in the future, life is good and I love myself and I love my life. So you have to give them a glimpse of that. And once they trust you, because it's, it's so foreign, it's such a foreign thing to say to someone that you're not your thoughts. What do you, what do you mean I'm not your thought, my thoughts? 60 years, 70 years. This is the only thing I know. Who are you telling me I'm not my thoughts? Because the mind will come and rebel. And it says, because the mind knows that it's getting close to death. Because I'm coming after it with my big ninja sword. I'm coming to cut the head. And the mind is going to get really frightened and comes up with all kinds of excuses. But the key is that we have the training. We're learning the new language. It's like we're learning how to write A, B, C, D. How to write. You're, you're going to learn French. You're going to learn Arabic. You're going to learn a new language. So you have to put time and energy into it and keep practicing to learn the new language. It requires training. We have to get trained. So a part of the training is to manage the mind, but not by the mind, not by positive thinking, by observation. Being able to fall into this place of the observer who is observing the thoughts and creating that distinction. Hopefully we have been able to do that in a much shorter period of time and helping our participants to recognize that. Some catch it quicker, some are slower, but we have created a system to do that and learning how to master the mind. And mastering the mind is A, to be able to watch it, to be in this position of witnessing it. So now when it does its ugly stuff, you create its separation because you're holding back, you're in this observation state and you're not identifying with it. So it's doing its thing 
but you're not, you're watching it. And you got to get discipline in it. It's not like one time I come and tell someone to do it and they just say, okay, because the mind will grab him out and pull him into identification. And that's one of the reasons whatever workshop I design is to point, point you back, bringing your attention back into the source to identify with the witness, not what is being witnessed. Because what is being witnessed, if we buy it, it drags us down to the gutter. It takes us into suffering. And that's one of the main reasons I created the life training program. Or whatever program I design is to manage the mind. Be able to come on the top and not buy into its stories. Because it's full of stories. And some of the stories that it will create, they sound great. They sound real, you know. But it's a story. It's illusion. It wants to sell you something which is not real. And it's very convincing. And it's been doing it. So it creates misery. But well, we're not going to let that happen no more. It's been happening for thousands of years and not here. Here, we're not a slave to the mind. We're the master of the mind. And we learn to be on the top and then the mind becomes a great servant. It will serve you beautifully. It wants to serve you. It just never had the chance because no one from the childhood ever taught us anything about this. Thank you for bringing it up, my brother. It was a great, great sharing. I appreciate it. Okay, I have a question. I resonate with all of that. Mine... Anything, anybody? I. Uh, hi, Karen. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Likewise. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wonder. Uh, you were talking about uh, when you were uh, telling this uh, uh, different examples on the past, right? Yes. Then you mentioned uh, then you mentioned this uh, this trap that when you're gaining spiritual powers, right? And that then I just uh, uh, wonder if you can clarify. Do you mean uh, that uh, if you use the spiritual powers uh, without being a, a pure channel, or what do you mean with that? It's a trap. Right. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. Um, it, it's, it is a part, it's, let's put it this way. It, it's natural and it's normal for some spiritual seekers to come across spiritual power as you are on your path to awakening. But, and it's okay, you use it naturally because it's your newly acquired power and it's very exciting to be able to do healing work on somebody or to be of help and service the part that is dangerous is if most people they identify with it as their personal power so it reinforces the I thought that I would come and say 
I'm going to heal you. Oh, look at me, look at me. I healed this person, I healed that person. And look at me, I'm almighty, I'm all powerful, I'm a great healer. Versus denying that power as person, as personal power, and saying it's God. God, the Spirit, is doing the healing through me and not taking any credit for it. Now, internally, you're not taking any credit for it. It's not you doing it. It's the, the Great One is doing it. So as long as you're clear with that within yourself, then you're good. But the moment you think that it's you doing it, you're in trouble. So I've had, I don't know if you heard me, I had a lot of people, many, many times people have asked me if I can heal this person or I can heal that or whatever. And I always say, I don't have any healing powers, but I know of one who has. So as a person, I don't have any healing powers because that's true. But when I'm not a person and I get out of the way, then that which is the healer comes to me, through me, and does the healing work. And that now, on a practical way, that doesn't mean if you've done healing on someone and they got healed and they want to thank you, you don't say, oh no, don't thank me. Or you may say, okay, thank God or whatever, but they're feeling a lot of gratitude towards you. And you say, yeah, you know, they're thanking you and you accept it. You say, you're welcome, my pleasure. But internally, you know, down deep, it wasn't you. And that's where I'm saying it's dangerous, not fall into that trap. But I'm not saying don't use it, and I'm not saying don't enjoy it. But don't take it personally. Okay? Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Very well. Well, we have come to... The, I do have a couple of comments here, but no one's asking me a question. Okay, all right. Very good, nice to see you all. Uh, our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, same time. So obviously our time in California changed. So right now the time difference between California and most parts of Europe is nine hours. You're nine hours ahead of us. So we're good um, as far as uh, the time confusion that we experienced a couple of weeks ago. Uh, next week we do have the Academy on Wednesday. We have a shamanic healing circle on Thursday and then the workshop uh, begins on Friday morning. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. California time, uh, which I believe is going to be from, what is it, 6, six to 10? Yeah, uh, 18 to 20 uh, European time. So I, if you feel compelled to join, join us, uh, you can contact us uh, either uh, go on our website, which is zaratustra.tv and click on that, go to the calendar event, and then you see the workshop and you can sign up there or, or um, write to us if uh, you need help. Uh, my email is info at zaratustra.tv. If you have any comments, any questions, or any suggestions, you're welcome to write to us. I would appreciate it. Try 
uh, best way is if you write to us as an email. Um, I, I, we do, we check out everything on Facebook, but if you want a quicker response, best is to write an email to us. Info at Zarathustra.tv I send you my love and light. I look forward to seeing you. Oh, by the way, before I forget is that we just uploaded uh, a bunch of new episodes uh, on our podcast. My podcast is Zarathustra 5D, same as my YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, and that's how you find me on Facebook as well. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Namaste. And have a wonderful week.